Hey, it's Sobriety Bestie and welcome to the Benzo series that I am doing. This video is about courageously getting off benzos, courageously considering getting off benzos, or more specifically, how I had the courage to get off benzos. This question comes directly from one of you, so thank you for sending me questions on what to make videos on. I am here to serve you. The question is, any recommendations on what gave you the courage to get off benzos when you felt like you needed them to live or to function? And the follow-up part of the question is, and this guy's asking for a friend, um, I'm sure his emotional sobriety journey after stopping will be really hard too. Not sure if you can highlight what that was like and how you healed from that, but that would also be interesting to learn about. Thank you. So super happy to be answering this question today. Also, um, one of my videos on YouTube, and maybe you've seen this one already, is how I got off benzos. I'll link it up here. Um, that one actually is, I made it like five or six years ago and I have gotten every week, if not sometimes daily for the past five or six years, I've gotten questions from you in my inbox asking about benzos. So I thought it was about time that I follow up with a full on series about benzos. So welcome to the benzo series. A little bit about my benzo story. So in 2006, I was in a car accident. I flew off the freeway, the I-5 going from LA to San Francisco at 70 miles per hour in a rainstorm. It was terrifying. Um, I spun out into the center divider and a month later I got back on that road and was driving back to LA from San Francisco. And I relived that accident in my head and had a panic attack at 70 miles per hour. As you can imagine, and maybe you can imagine because you've had that experience too. Maybe you've seen my video on driving anxiety, I'll post it up here. Um, as you can imagine, I was terrified. And so I, um, from that day forward, basically it started in me a phobia of driving on freeways. Um, I obviously had to finish driving to LA and then back to San Francisco, which was petrifying. And then I stopped driving on freeways for about three and a half years until I got sober. Um, a year later, I made it into a psychiatrist's office and I told them about my generalized anxiety, as he called it, my panic disorder, as he called it, um, and as my freeway phobia, as he called it or diagnosed it, right? And so it all started basically from the day of the panic attack on the freeway is this whole new, um, even worsening experience with it, like a worse experience with anxiety. I'd always been anxious um, and I'd used alcohol to help with anxiety. I guess you know alcohol does help with anxiety sometimes, right? Not recommending it, but we, we do know it helps. And so he prescribed me uh, the benzodiazepine clonopin or clonazepam and I took that as prescribed by him um, daily, I took it in the morning and the night. Now, clonopin, as far as I remember and recall, is a, it takes about a half an hour to affect us, to hit us, for the effects to work, and then it lasts about 12 hours. So I was essentially always having clonopin in my system, taking it every morning and then 12 hours again later at night. Now, I did take them as prescribed. He did say take them twice a day, but I did, I was dishonest with him about how much I was drinking. So in that sense, um, I was misusing them, although I didn't really realize it because I didn't realize at that time in 2006 that the, the way that benzos work on the brain, the mechanism is very similar to how alcohol works on, on the brain. It, um, it works on the GABA part of the brain, right, to relax us. And so flash forward to two and a half years later after taking benzos um, daily for two and a half years, um, and I don't remember what what dosage I was on, I really just don't remember, but I got to rehab September 29th, 2009 for alcohol, and I believed at the time for anxiety as well. All my rehab friends told me about their first week in rehab was like detox week. They were on detox meds and were in their room detoxing. And after several days, I went to the my, my therapist there and I was like, when are you guys gonna put me on detox week? Like everybody talks about this detox week thing. And she says, look, you came in on the detox meds we give benzos to the people who are detoxing from alcohol. So we're letting you stay on them the first week for your, your so-called detox week. Although for me, it was just like a normal week. I didn't feel anything any different really. Well, other than, you know, being in rehab, which is, you know, <laughs> has also a lot of sorts of feels that go with it. So then what she said is what we're going to do is we're going to detox you from the benzos starting on week two in here. And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. My doctor gave me these meds. I actually need these. I have anxiety. And she said, well, we're your doctor now and we're taking you off the benzos. They have the same mechanism in the brain as alcohol does and you're gonna be getting off them. I was livid. I was really, really angry. Uh, I felt like I needed them. And maybe that's you too. Maybe you really relate to that bit about the question about how do I have the courage to get off of benzos when I feel like I need them to function and to live. That certainly was my experience. 
And so they came to me with a protocol in rehab, you know, a week into rehab, I was there for 30 days. And they, the protocol was something, I don't remember it exactly. This was September, 2009 at this point. And so the protocol was something like, you're gonna need to leave here and buy a scale. And then you're gonna need to measure off the benzos and slowly taper down using the scale to measure your dose down over, it was some period of time between six months and two years. I'm not really sure. It might've been a year and a half that they recommended it. And I would, the idea was I would slowly, you know, after every month or so, I would slowly take a little bit less until I was off them completely. And um, rehab was expensive, as you know, or as maybe you can imagine, or maybe as you've experienced. And I didn't like the idea. I got angry again at the idea of needing to leave rehab and to buy a scale. And I had no idea about benzos. I was, um, I was uh, misled by my doctor. And I don't know if my psychiatrist who prescribed me the benzodiazepine was well-informed or not. Quite frankly, it should have been his job to be informed about benzos and the withdrawal symptoms that come with them and the, uh, the tolerance and the uh, dependency that comes with them, the addiction that comes with them, the physical dependency, right? And so I was told by my psychiatrist in 2000, um, 2007 when I got on the benzos, I was told they were not addictive, which is not true. Um, and so flash forward to being in rehab, they're telling me that benzos are really hard to get off of. And so you need to wean down slowly. I got livid, I got angry. I really didn't like the idea of spending all this money on rehab and then needing to leave rehab and buy a scale to slowly measure these like meds and these drugs down, right? Like, so I didn't like that idea. It just sounded, sounded crazy to me. And I didn't wanna have to buy a scale when I'm leaving this expensive rehab. Now I understand that they were actually giving me solid sound advice. Um, that they actually knew what they were talking about, where my psychiatrist was confused or was getting me hooked on meds, or I don't know what he was doing. That is his journey, right? That is totally his journey. I told them I wanted to get off benzos while I was in rehab, that this whole like year and a half buying a scale plan was absolutely not okay. I was not okay with it. And I wanted to get off, they were a medical detox facility, detox me from these meds. So my therapist went and talked to the medical doctor at the rehab and they got back to me with a new protocol to do. Now keep in mind, I am not a doctor at all. This is not medical advice. I am just genuinely ex sharing my experience about this in case it could help you or someone that you care about that you're watching this video to see, to understand them better. So the doctor, so I'm about like seven, eight, nine days into rehab now in my 30 day stint. They come back to me with a new protocol that was something like getting off the benzos completely off of clonopin, clonazepam, in 10 days to like radically dose me down and then have me be in rehab like another week or two completely off benzos and alcohol under medical supervision. I don't remember if it was the day after they started the, the drastic tapering down or it was two days later, but I know shortly after I went on the new protocol to like rapidly take me off clonopin, which I don't recommend unless you're, you know, like I was in a medical facility and you're actually informed, which is why I'm so glad you're watching this video, that you're getting information on this, you know, so you can make these decisions more consciously with your doctor. So you know what's up, right? So I was in this group therapy program. We were, we were holding a paper because we were reading lyrics to a song. It was actually, uh, the artist Pink had a new song called Sober that came out around that time. This was September, 2009. So I was holding the lyrics to the song in my hand and it was like literally like the paper was shaking. And I, I couldn't read the lyrics because I was going like this. And so that whole time that we were in that group therapy session, which was like an hour or whatever, I was, uh, convulsing, tremoring, having my body was uncontrollably shaking. And it continued afterwards too. It continued for about two hours. At first, I didn't have any like mental anxiety that went along with it. I didn't have a story that I was putting in my head about how I was scared. It was just physically weird. And then if mental anxiety kicked in after that. And they gave me, I believe what they gave me is Ativan. They had Ativan for like emergency use if my anxiety was getting too bad or my benzo withdrawals were getting too bad while I was still in that treatment center. And so I did take an Ativan. I believe it was Ativan at that time. It might've been Xanax, but I believe Ativan is what they used. Now Ativan is also a benzodiazepine. Um, it is faster acting and has a, a, a shorter half-life than clonopin. So it does have a slightly different effect in the body. Um, hit you faster and it ends sooner, right? And so there is some sort of um, science in there of why they use benzos to detox you from benzos. So talk to your doctor about that. And I think really like ultimately what gave me the courage to get off the benzos. Um, wow, yeah, I'm really feeling it. Like I just was done. I just felt like I was done. Like alcohol, 
and my anxiety almost took my life and maybe even benzos as well. It's hard to separate everything out. Like my anxiety from my drinking, from my alcohol abuse, from like the benzos, right? It was all happening at the same time. So I drank for 17 years and then the last two and a half years of my drinking, I was drinking a lot and I was taking benzos, you know, twice a day for those two and a half years. And my anxiety kept piling up over the years. Like I kept like, I kept getting harmed like every so often, every couple of years, there'd be like another trauma that never got resolved. And so it just was like, I had this, my nervous system was like a collecting like more traumas over the years. And so I just was like, I needed more to numb it down, right? And so really when I was in rehab, I just felt like I wanna be off everything. I want this fresh new start at life. Like I almost died and I got spared somehow, like by the grace of like whatever, God, a higher power, my spirit, my soul, my destiny, whatever it was, I got a second shot at life. And I wanted to use that second shot at life. It felt like a second shot at life. Now, whether you already feel like you're in one or you wanna make this be one or you wanna commit it to being one, like that's what we have on offer here when we're really looking at this. Am I getting off alcohol? Am I getting off benzos? Now, there is no shame in any of this, right? If you decide to stay on benzos, you and your doctor together, and that's gonna be your journey and you're just here to find out more information about it, like all the love to you. Like there is no judgment in what you decide to do. I think you need to trust yourself. That is my only advice for anybody ever and myself. There is like wisdom inside you. There is whether it is God, your spirit, a higher power, your intuition, your soul, you know, another part of our nervous system that can feel things, right? We have those nerves that go up from our gut to our brain, whatever it is that's inside you, you got to trust it, right? That's the journey home is to trusting ourselves, whether we take them or don't or, you know, and whether we, whether we work with our doctor and maybe part of the protocol is that you go to your doctor with your intuition and say, I think we're tapering down too fast. Can we go, can we slow it down or can we speed it up? Um, and so that's my hope for everybody. And that's really why I make videos in the first place, because, you know, I'm on the journey to trusting myself and I, I hope you are too. That's the invitation. And so, yeah, really it was, you know, it was, I wanted to use my second shot at life. That's what helped fuel my courage. I had spent a lot of money on rehab that also fueled my courage. And I really just wanted to be completely off everything. I wanted to find out like, you know, I wanted to find out how to be comfortable in my skin naturally. That's really what I wanted. I wanted this new shot at life. The other thing that I noticed, especially in rehab was like, and over the years of getting off benzos and living without anything in my system, um, was that like, if this is the full vibrancy of life from like those feelings that we don't prefer, like maybe rage, grief, whatever, that the hard feelings are the ones that are intolerable or that we don't like, you know, there's like the so-called negative feelings over here. And then over here, something like joy or bliss or love, rapture, like good feelings that we prefer. So if this is the full range of feelings. I felt like when I was taking clonopin, my life got like smushed down to like this and I was living in here. So I was super numbed out. So it, well, I wasn't feeling all that anxiety or all those difficult uh, emotions or all that, that pain, that emotional pain that I was trying to suppress that the benzos helped cover up. I wasn't feeling any of that, which was amazing, right? Who wants to feel that? I mean, there's a better way. There's, you know, I, I love also teaching about how to feel that and process it so we're not a slave to it, right? Actually, the best way is to actually move through it, not to avoid it, right? I think so. And then, but when I was numbing down those, um, those, those so-called negative feelings or the feelings that were hard, like the ones I didn't prefer to be with, I was also numbing down those positive or so-called positive feelings or the ones that I did prefer. So my entire experience emotionally was like blunted. My, I had blunted affect, it's called, right? So I wasn't experiencing the highs of life because I was numbing out the lows. We can't selectively numb. So the joy was gone. My vibrancy was gone. I wasn't really truly like alive. My aliveness was gone. Everything was numbed down here. And as I was getting off benzos, I could really, really see this. And so what I did was, you know, I, so I got off hardcore in rehab, the, the, the convulsions and the shaking stopped. Uh, in this series, there's a bunch of other videos, like there's videos on the symptoms of benzos, my symptoms of benzos and benzo symptoms in general. Um, and then how to detox from benzos. Of course, you guys know I'm not a medical doctor, just sobriety bestie over here sharing my experience and teaching the neuroscience that I've learned to help me along the way and how um, healing my heart and aligning with my spirit, like that's what really helped me. And so that's what I'm here to teach about and talk about and share about. And so what I did is like when I got out of rehab, I was super scared. 
I didn't know how to be with all of that was arising inside my body. The reason there were reasons why I got on benzos in the first place. Like I had all that panic and all that anxiety. So that was still there in a way. It's not like the benzos cured that. They covered it. They numbed it out. They turned my feelings of it, of it and awareness of it down. So without the benzos, that was coming up. So I'm having an experience of um, coming off benzos in and of itself. So my neurology is, you know, all over the place. If I've been calming myself down, now I'm very excited. And I don't mean excited in a good way. I mean excited in a, my nervous system is excitatory versus being calm. So getting off benzos, I have the, that rebound effect where I'm having a lot of anxiety. I'm having a lot of irritability, uh, insomnia, the, all the effects where my nervous system is very excited while it's learning, coming back down to homeostasis and balancing back out. So I'm coming off benzos, huge effect there in my nervous system. Uh, I would say that I just felt like I was having a lot of anxiety and waking up with anxiety attacks all the time, really uncomfortable in my skin. And then I also had the effects of coming off alcohol, which in some ways is similar, but then there's a whole journey as well of like making new friends, creating a new life, all of that. Then I also had access at this point to those non-numbed feelings, right? The original pain, my original trauma that, that I was, that was being masked. So the feelings that I never felt, they were there. And then I also had a lack of ability or experience. I didn't have a lot of resources to deal with my stress, with my emotions, with my anxiety. In sobriety bestie world, <laughs> I call all that arousal. That is an activated nervous system. My body was very aroused. Now, when I say this, I'm not talking about arousal in the context of sexual arousal. There are multiple kinds of arousal. I think just common language, we, we associate like arousal with sexual feelings. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about arousal of my nervous system. It's called autonomic arousal. If I can get a little geeky here for a minute. So my autonomic nervous system was very aroused. The benzos had suppressed it, had numbed it, had calmed it down, had calmed all of my arousal down. And so without that effect, I'm on a rebound. And the rebound from that is a lot of arousal. And so the arousal, the way that I would refer to that at the time, I didn't think of it as arousal then. Now that I've studied the nervous system more, I know that it was arousal. But I would have called it anxiety, stress, rage, irritability, anger, frustration, like all this activated um, non-calm states were highly aroused in me. So I had very little, like zero to none coping skills to deal with those aroused states aside from alcohol and benzos. So I was on the journey to learn how to be with the discomfort. And that's actually like the whole like thing about this video that I wanna share with you. The way out, like the trick out, the secret, was to commit to courage. And so you probably already know this, but it's worth saying right here, like courage and fear feel the same. When we do the thing that's scary, that is aligned with us to do, right? And I'm not talking about courage, like jumping out of an airplane, like parachuting or like skydiving, you know, or petting a lion, or I don't know. I'm talking about when we take action that's aligned with our heart and our spirit, when we're, we're courageously pursuing um, something that's important to us, like a goal or a relationship or a dream, something like that. When we're scared, when we're nervous, but we're still doing that thing anyways, that's courage. And in the moment, it feels like fear, it feels like anxiety, it feels like doubt or whatever it feels like. But that fear and that courage are the same feeling in our body, it's the same arousal. And so when we actually do the thing anyways, that's, at that point, it's called courage. Right? We were scared, we're scared, we're scared, we're taking all this action and it feels scary, it feels scary, it feels scary, it feels scary. Then we get over here, we look back on all of that action that we took and we can say, oh, I felt scared, but in hindsight, I could see all those things were courage. So that's the invitation here. How do you have the courage to get off benzos? You be present. Each day, you, you do the thing that you need to do so that you can be okay whether it's tending to your arousal, tending to your nervous system, tending to your anxiety, learning how to be with it, learning how to regulate yourself, learning how to calm yourself down, or whether it's take, taking action towards your dream. For me, essentially, at the end of it all, <laughs> and you know, in late September, September 29th, 2009 is when I went to rehab. So um, that was a bad month. That I'd say September 2009 was the worst, worst month of my life. And uh, I was afraid of everything. I was I had agoraphobia, so I was afraid to leave the house. I had a freeway phobia. I was afraid to drive on the freeway. I was afraid of dogs. If you've seen my channel, you know that I'm now in love with dogs. Um, and so, and I was petrified of public speaking. There is no way 
that I would have made a video and put it on the internet ever. Like I was afraid of everything essentially. That's what it felt like. I had a lot of phobias and a lot of fears. And because I like felt like I was afraid of everything, that's what it seemed like. Um, I felt like I had to just be willing to be scared for a long time. Like be willing to be courageous for a long time. Like it was as if I had fallen in this pit of like fear. And so my journey was to like slowly walk out of that pit of fear into a whole new life. I wanted to live, I wanted to come alive. And that meant that I had to be willing to change my relationship with discomfort. Courage is discomfort, it, it's not comfortable, right? When we are being courageous, it, that is also discomfort, right? So I needed to change my relationship. I needed to have a new relationship. That's your invitation here is to have a, choose to have a new relationship with discomfort, choose to have a new relationship with courage. I did all of the action, all of the things that were aligned with my heart and my spirit. So like there was a day when I was like speaking in a recovery meeting reluctantly, like they made me speak, right? Go be the speaker. I was like a year sober and I was up there speaking and something felt right in my soul. Like this is it. Like I'm supposed to do this. I was terrified of public speaking. I was having a panic attack while I was doing it. I was crying. It was snot was flying everywhere, but something deep in me said, this is it. And so I was like, well, right, okay. I've committed to taking all action aligned with my heart and my spirit. So I joined Toastmasters. <laughs> you know, I started, I started learning how to be a public speaker because I felt like, you know, I'm gonna do everything. What's more important than my fear? Or to put it this way, before I got sober, before I got off benzos, I stopped doing the things that scared me. I stopped driving on freeways. I, I avoided any situation that avoided, had public speaking in it, right? I avoided dogs. Anything that scared me, I just avoided it. And so on this new journey after benzos and this new journey after alcohol, I decided I'm gonna do the things that scare me if they feel aligned with my heart and my spirit. Whether it's speaking, dogs, driving, whatever. I've since overcome all my phobias. So like, that's the journey. The journey is like falling in love with our discomfort. Now the interesting thing that I learned, and I don't know if this is your story or your experience either, but like I had so much shame around all that fear and all that discomfort and the fact that I was even on benzos, the fact that I was drinking a lot as well, the fact that I had this, like that I, I felt like something was broken inside my head. And I didn't understand agoraphobia, the fear of leaving the house. That one was so weird. Like I understood the fear of driving on the freeway. I had that car accident, right? I had a very scary event but I had no recollection of a scary event around like leaving the house. Like, what was that about? Was that just like an accumulation of my fear and my traumas? And maybe it was, but something in the research when I was um, geeking out for the past week to make this Benzo series for you, for my read, my viewers on YouTube who are interested in this stuff, or maybe it's for a loved one that you're, you know, generously spending your time here watching this so you can help somebody that you care about, which is super, super beautiful. Um, when I was doing all that research, I learned something new. The dots are still connecting. Ha! Huh. I didn't know any of this stuff on benzos back in the day when I was on them or coming off them. But so this is what I learned. I learned that according to the Ashton Manual, which is a book, Benzodiazepines by Dr. Heather Ashton. Um, it's actually free on Amazon on Kindle. If you want to go read it, I recommend it. I'll put a link to her book in the comments. Um, and this this video is more my experience. It's not the, the research that I did. That's in the, the rest of the series, which this will be linked to, right? I'll link it up here. I'll link it in, the, in the, the playlist. What Dr. Heather Ashton found after running a benzo withdrawal clinic for 14 years is that 20% of the people in her research, in her clinic, developed agoraphobia after they got on benzos. I developed agoraphobia, fear of leaving the house, after I got on benzos. But there's a relationship there. I always wondered, like, why is this happening? Why do I freeze? Why do I go to leave the house and freeze at the doorknob? Like, at the doorknob, I can't open the door. I don't know what I'm afraid of, but I'm frozen. And I'm not suggesting, like, a chicken and egg thing here, like the benzos caused the agoraphobia. Because you can't really, in research, say this caused this so much. There's a relationship there that after 20% of the people that got on benzos in her 14 year, you know, her research experience, 20% of them developed agoraphobia. So to me, that's like, a, like unsolved mysteries. Like, oh my God, there is something about being on benzos. And maybe it's not that directly because of the benzos. Maybe it's because the benzos inhibit an actual true healing. Because I've read that as well. I've read that if you take benzos after trauma, the integration and healing of the trauma is suppressed 
is not, is not happening. So there's a lot of healing available for you. And ultimately, ultimately the reason why I got off benzos and the, the reason why I had the courage to get off benzos is because I wanted to live. I wanted to live. I was choosing life. I was choosing that I wanted to take this shot at life that I had and I wanted to come alive. It was like F fear became my mantra, like F fear. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this like, you know, I almost died and I got the second shot. I'm going to live. I'm going to do everything that I can to live. I'm going to make the most of this second shot at life. And maybe you're feeling that right now. Maybe you're feeling that as I say that, say it with me. I choose to live. I choose to live. I choose to live. It was a choice to live. That's why I had the courage because I wanted to live because I didn't have to die. We don't know when we're going to die. We all know we're going to die. We kind of are in denial about it, right? But like, we don't know when we're going to die, but we're all going to die. You're going to die. I'm going to die. But are we going to live? Are you going to live? Are you going to live? Choose to live. Choose to have the courage to live. Decide to have the courage to live. That was the best gift that I got with getting off benzos and getting off alcohol, getting sober. But when I got off benzos, I chose to live. That's what's in front of you. You have a choice to live, to trust yourself, to take action in alignment with your heart and your spirit, and to be on the journey of finding out who you are and why you're here. Because after we get comfortable in our skin, which I promise you, there is a lot of freedom available to you. I don't know how much, I don't know what you've been through, our nervous systems are all different. Genetics and our experience, everything that we've been through, we have different relationships with stress. We've been through different things. But what I can promise you is there is a lot of freedom available to you. There's a lot of freedom available to you. There's a lot of more comfort in your skin available to you. I don't know how free you're gonna get, but you get to find out. You know, how free do you wanna be? How free do you wanna be? Are you willing to be courageous? That's the price tag a willingness to be courageous, a willingness to walk our way into that new life. It is the warrior walk. This is the warrior walk we're talking about. Walking out of benzos is the warrior walk because you're gonna be faced with a lot of stuff. This isn't light, it's not a light journey, but there is freedom at the end of this tunnel and during the tunnel, right? Like you are walking to freedom. It is a warrior walk because you are gonna experience most likely I did a lot of us will experience a lot of feelings on the way to freedom. And it's what we do while we're walking to freedom that's gonna determine how far, how much freedom we get. Are you gonna have a new relationship with your arousal, with your anxiety, with your stress, with your emotions? That's gonna get you to freedom. My relationship with, you know, like what was your relationship before with your arousal, with your anxiety, with your emotions, with your stress? Mine was, I don't want to feel this. I don't know how to feel this. This is too much. I'm overwhelmed. I am freaking out. Let me put something inside my body to stop how I feel, to regulate how I feel. Let me find something on the outside, alcohol, benzos, to regulate how I feel on the inside. Now, there is no shame in doing this. Our doctors tell us to do it. It's kind of normal to do it, right? But if you're on this journey, the warrior walk, where you're coming off and you're thinking about coming off benzos or you're already courageously coming off benzos, this is serious courage. Like drop it in the comments, right? I, this means apparently comment, <laughs> put in the comments, I am courageous, claim it, claim it. You are courageous, this is courageous, right? I'm a warrior, <laughs> I am courageous. That was my mantra in the beginning. That is how I got off benzos. That is how I had the courage to get off benzos. I literally told myself every day, this is courage. This is courage. Like facing all these feelings, facing this stress and this anxiety, everything that I feel in my body and not medicating it, this is courage. I literally said every day, this is courage. My motto was F fear. And I, my mantra, what I told myself every day was this is courage. Type it in the comments, this is courage. Type in the comments, I'm doing the warrior walk. Claim something, claim it here. Woo! You feel that? I feel that. Just take a breath. This is serious courage. Like if you're watching the video this long, you're freaking courageous. This is courage. This is courage. There's a lot of things that I did 
in order to know how to face all of those, all of the arousal, all of my anxiety, my stress, my emotions. It took me a long time because it wasn't compiled together in one place. And back in 2009, like it feels like it wasn't that long ago. It was also 13 years ago that I got off benzos, but it was a different world in 2009. You know, people didn't talk openly about, about anxiety the way they do now, or benzos the way they do now, or alcohol or sobriety the way that they do now. You know, I didn't have like a roadmap. I didn't have a ticket out. I had a doctor who was less than honest with me about what the nature of benzos in the first place. I didn't have legitimate help at the time. You know, I was kind of like out in the wild, wild west of it all, trying to figure this out myself. And so what I've done for the warriors out there, for anybody who wants to feel more comfortable in their skin, I've put together a roadmap that it, that is my, my, what I've learned over being on this walk for 13 years and also teaching people and have, teaching people how to walk out of the anxiety hell for the past 10 years. I started my business in 2012. I've seen a lot. I've helped a lot of people. And so what I want to say, if, if you want my help, there is, it's for free. It's over at sobrietybestie.com slash roadmap, sobrietybestie.com slash roadmap. And so there's a PDF there um, that you can print out and put on your wall and just to remind yourself about the warrior walk and the steps in it. It's like, se it's like seven different things. And then there's also a video that's much longer that explains it all. I don't want to get into explaining it all here because this video is long enough as it is, but that's waiting for you at sobrietybetsy.com if you want that. So you're welcome. Get the roadmap. Walk to freedom. At the very least, at the very least, what I hope you get from this video is how courageous you are. I want you to own it. I want you to own it. Like I really, from the depth of my soul, I hope you felt my soul in this video. I want you to own your courage. This is so courageous. You are being so courageous, even considering it, you know? Whether you get off the benzos or not, whether you get sober or not, whether you whether you just learn like one arousal, one anxiety, one anxiety attack, one feeling at a time, that you learn how to meet yourself with your own consciousness, which is what I teach you in the roadmap, that you regain control of your life. This is about reclaiming your life so that you're not a slave to anything. And it takes tremendous courage. And I see it in you. I see your courage. And I want you, like my prayer is that you see it in yourself. I am courageous, say it with me. I am courageous. I am courageous. Say it with me. I am courageous. Whew. Part of me is a little embarrassed for like, you know, the energy. And then part of me is like, you are so courageous. I want you to know it. I want your cells to feel it. Do your cells feel it. Say it with me. Say it so your cells of your body, your nervous system, that you feel it in your body, that all your cells vibrate with it. I am courageous. I am courageous. One more time. I am courageous. That's how you do it. By claiming your courage. You're a warrior. This is the warrior walk. <sighs> All right, I'm going to leave it here. I'll see you in the next video. You are so courageous.